A couple of weeks ago I made this video about the importance of support and resistance zones in price action trading. That video briefly went over the features Chartmill offers to recognize support and resistance zones and filter stocks based on specific characteristics that had to do with those support and resistance levels. In this video I explore that topic in a bit more depth because I received several questions about it. Without further ado, let's go to the stock screener page so I can go over all the filtering options. Select the support and resistance section. Here you will find a lot of different options. The filter options are actually divided into two major groups. There are the filters that deal specifically with support and resistance. And there is a separate group of filters that use the chart mill channels. More on that later on. We'll start with the filtering capabilities for support and resistance. If on the stock screener page you see a summary table instead of charts, first change the view to charts via the drop down menu in the horizontal bar. The first thing we are going to do is make sure that the support and resistance levels are visible on our chart. To do so, open the main chart menu, remove all the existing indicators and overlays and then open the drop down menu under select overlay to add and choose support and resistance lines. You immediately notice that Chartmill has added diagonal and horizontal lines to the charts. These are the price levels that Chartmill has automatically recognized as potential support and resistance zones. Red is resistance, green is support. Because those levels are associated with specific price points, it is possible to set up filters based on them to define multiple properties. The first two filter fields, resistance R1 and support S1, are used to filter based on the next support and resistance levels. No distinction is made between horizontal or diagonal lines, only the distance to the next support or resistance level is important. If you open the drop down menu, you have several options. First of all, you can define the distance by the percentage that the price is above or below the next resistance level. This ranges from 1 to 10%. With the R1 length filter, it is also possible to filter based on the minimum number of periods that the resistance level has been in place. The shortest period is 10 and the longest is 200. Finally, there is the strength filter. This defines how many times the price has already tested that resistance zone in the past. Of course, you will find these same settings under support as one regarding the next support level. For example, a filter where I instruct Chartmill to show me all stocks that are within 2% of the nearest resistance level and where that resistance level has existed for at least 50 days gives me the following results. Now of course not all these results are usable just like that. Chartmill's automatic recognition of support and resistance level is not perfect. Still, by using these filters you will regularly spot nice setups that are interesting from a risk reward point of view. Pinnacle Financial Partners, for example, which is quoted close to the top of a rising triangle pattern. Or the stock Johnson & Johnson, which might be on the verge of breaking out above a descending trend line that has always acted as resistance so far. The next two filter fields do exactly the same but only for horizontally identified support and resistance zones. As an example, I take current 5% from horizontal resistance 1, HR1 length more than 50 and HR1 strength bigger than 4. The diagonal support and resistance lines also remain visible as they were previously added as overlays to the chart. However, by using this filter, Chartmill will only take horizontal levels into account. The filter options such as length and strength are completely the same. The next horizontal support and resistance step allows you to simultaneously search for the next horizontal support or resistance level. It is actually a combination of the two previous separate filters. With this filter, the result will depend purely on how close the price is to the next support or resistance level. Whatever is closest is shown. This filter also allows you to specify whether the price should be above or below the next support or resistance level. For example, current 2% above HSR1, so the horizontal support or resistance. HSR1 length more than 50 and the strength bigger than 3. As a result you get these 3 stocks whose price is within 2% distance of the next support or resistance level identified by Chartmill. In this case all 3 are support levels. I skip these filter settings because they show exactly the same as the filters above but based on the weekly charts. So a quick example for the weekly horizontal support filter. 
uh, current 2% from the weekly horizontal support and WHS length bigger than 50. Just make sure that the time frame for the chart is set to weekly. And as you will notice on the charts, you end up with stocks whose price is close to a technical support level on their weekly charts. The last two specific support and resistance filters to be discussed are consolidated resistance and consolidated support. To do this, we are first going to add the consolidated support and resistance overlay to the chart. The difference with the horizontal support and resistance lines is that support and resistance in this case are visualized as a zone and not as one line at a specific price level. And because Chartmill does not base the use of this filter on a specific price level, but on a more comprehensive price zone, you will be left with a lot more candidates when using the same filter settings. The reason this filter option was added is simply because when using support and resistance, you never rely on one specific price level. Keep in mind that for these consolidated zones, it is not possible to set a length. The second filter block in the support and resistance section of the stock screener deals with the use of the so-called chart mill channels. We will first make these visible on the chart. Go to the main chart tab again, click on the plus sign and open the drop down menu next to select overlay to add. Next, choose chart mill channels. Unlike the well-known Dunkian channels, chart mill channels do not require any additional parameters. Chartmill itself calculates the most optimal value, aiming for the best available balance between as long as possible and as tight as possible. They are designed to spot sideways trading ranges from which a price breakout can then follow. A more detailed article on the Chartmill channels that was previously published in Traders Magazine can be found in our documentation section. In the description below this video, I will add a direct link to the article. The available parameters are the same as for the support and resistance filters, being the maximum percentage difference between the price and the upper or lower chart mill channel, the length and the strength of these channels. The screener allows setting both filters based on the upper and lower channel, as well as setting a maximum for the width of the channel. As an example, for the upper chart mill channel, current 5% from the upper chart mill channel, the length greater than 20 and the strength bigger than 2. And then for the lower chart mill channel, current 5% away, length bigger than 50 and strength bigger than 2. And finally, a maximum bandwidth of 5%. Since this gives zero results, I adjust the bandwidth to a maximum of 7%. This actually does give one result, AMN Healthcare Services. The stock indeed shows a fairly narrow sideways price channel in which the price is currently moving. It is a nice stock to keep an eye on as soon as it breaks out of the sideways range. Also for these chart mill channels you can apply the filters to weekly charts. So with this we have gone over all the possible filters in the support and resistance section. At first this section can certainly seem a bit overwhelming, but hopefully this video has given you a little more insight into the many variations and you can now use them effectively while screening. If there are any questions about this section, please feel free to leave your question or comment below and you would be doing us a big favor by liking this video and subscribing to this channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.